Hi everyone, welcome to the Virgo Show. Today's guest is all the way from the UK. He's a fashion designer. His name is Gianni Salvatore. Hello Gianni, how are you? I'm good, how are you doing? I hope you're doing good. I'm very well, thank you. It's a little bit early in the morning here, but hey, it's okay. Um, well, it's a little bit late here, sorry. but it's okay. I've got my coffee, so I'm okay. <laughs> Yeah, I just Gianni. I just had a coffee so I can wake myself up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's early for me, but it's, it's all good. Now, Gianni, I want um, people to find out um, a little bit about you before we go into the hot topics, because um, I haven't really done an episode like this where we're actually talking about awareness of what's happening in the world today. But we'll just pull it back a little bit. Just tell us a little bit about your upbringing. Okay. So I'm going to tell you a little bit. My father is Arab. My mom is mixed race. Um, I wasn't born in this country. I wasn't born in UK. But the, for the first time when I came to UK, I'm going to give you a little story, which is going to, you're going to understand why I am the way I am as a person. When I first came to this country, I've never, ever knew what color was. Never seen color. We did not know what color was. I only knew people and people. And that's it. So when I first came to this country, it was kind of weird because I wasn't white. I'm not black. I'm not Asian. Definitely not Chinese. Don't look Chinese. <laughs> so I was in a bit of a weird place. So I used to get bullied a lot. And not just bullied. Um, I was so damn ugly. So damn ugly. It makes me laugh when I think like this. So ugly that I used to get bullied for being ugly. So. I thought, yeah, well, it's part of life, you know? So what? Not everyone is going to be good looking. Not everyone is going to be ugly. You know what? You've got to have a personality. You, your personality, that's why I always say your personality makes you who you are. So I was probably one of the ugliest kids in my school. We you wouldn't think so, man. Seriously. I, I, can I, I can relate to you, Diani, too, because when I was young and I was at school, I had the same problem. I was bullied, too, for my looks. So I hear you. Yeah. So do you know what? It, it is part of the thing. So I will go as far as being ugly as I probably not just a school, probably in a city, the ugliest man, ugliest man in the city, boy in a city. So being ugly and not liked by people puts you in a place where you have a lot of time on your own to think about who you are as a person. So guess what? On one hand, when bad things are happening, on the other hand, you don't realize the path of your life is opening up. So bad things actually makes you who you are today. They, what they do to you, bad things, mm. what they do to you is they sculpture you into yes. this divine human being. So what I started doing, I thought, okay, if I'm ugly, people are not going to like me. I might as well, you know, get people to like me for other reasons. So, I was always into clothes. I was always into fashion. I used to love dressing nicely. But remember one thing, back then, it was a massive thing that if you dress smart, you were known as gay. All right? So I remember when I was growing up, oh, by the way, I'm not gay. Far from gay. All right? So uh, when I was growing up, being ugly, being bullied, then I decided I'm going to start I want people to like me. So I used to design my own clothes, my trousers, my shirts, everything for my school uniform. I used to get thrown out of the school, but I would not stop. And now, not just <laughs> ugly, I used to get bullied for being ugly. Then I used to get bullied for being weird. And then I used to get bullied for, I'm, I dress smart, so I must be gay. Then I used to get bullied for being gay. So. Oh, my goodness. No, you make me laugh, John, because you know why? When I was young, I designed my own clothes too. I didn't go buy patterns, nothing. I just go in a shop, I'd find the fabric, yeah, and I could imagine the outfit. Then I'd go home on my mum's sewing machine and sew it and put it on. It's all in here. It's all in here. Oh, God. Talk Can about, you... oh, go. Sorry, I had to say that. I'm just freaking out. <laughs> you go on. It's called your inner creativity. You don't realize who you are until you start to. When the whole world is against you, that's the time when you really, really find who you are as a person. Now, remember this. This is a very, very strong words. 
when everything is against you, when you look to your right, when you, when you look to your right and you think, I can't go this way, you look to your left, I can't go that way, you look in front, if I go there, that's not going to be good for me. I can't definitely can't go back. So what you do, you go into your bubble, and then when you're sitting in your bubble, you realize who you are as a person. So I started designing clothes. I started wearing clothes. Then what happened was I used to get my father's leather jackets. I've done this interview before somewhere. I don't remember where, but it was a big interview I've done where people asked me. I said, yeah, I used to get my father's leather jackets. I used to cut them, make them, cut them myself. And I trust me, it was hard work. I used to wear gloves and I used to tape my fingers so I can get the sew, uh, get the needle going through my leather things. And I used to get bullied for it. I used to get bullied for wearing leather jackets. They used to call me Fonzie. My nickname oh, was Fonzie. Happy days. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, they weren't happy days back then. They weren't that happy days. But it taught me something. It taught me that I'm limitless. It taught me that you can throw whatever you want at me. I will come up with something different. So that was my thing for being a designer. I always did. So my mom took me to a tailor and said, my son is, he wants to make this leather jacket. All right. But he's not, he can't, he hasn't got the technique. And then when that guy looked at my design, he turned around and he said, did you design this? I was like, yeah. He was like, this is amazing. I was like, my mom looked at me and go, no, it's just, just no. He said, all right, you go home, come back after four days. I will have the leather jacket ready for you. It was my design, my cut, my pattern. He made the leather jacket, but he was a professional. He was wow. a professional. I was 11 or 12, 13, 13. I was 13 when I done that. And I wore that jacket until I was 28. My goodness. It was made, it had no lining inside. Can you imagine back in the days when people didn't have lining? I'm the one who created a leather jacket with, without lining. Culture wow. people, can, people can say whatever they want. I know because I done my research and I looked around and everything. All right. I made the leather jacket without lining and it used to be it was skin fitted leather jacket. Never, ever been done before. All right. But now I think that I created something that's a matter the world doesn't know about it. But I do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that was my start into fashion. And I've always been into fashion. You can give me some. I never, ever, ever look at somebody else's design and I sit and I design. The way I design, I give myself 72 hours and I close my lights. This is my office at the moment, but this is, I've come back from, I, cl I switch my lights off. I switch everything off. I only have my laptop and my, I can't sketch anymore because I do a lot of boxing. So I've hurt my hand all over here. So my hand shakes a bit so I can't sketch anymore. 72 hours, hardly any food, lots of coffee. All right, no one is to disturb me. Lights are off and I start designing. When I finish designing, I always design something which hasn't been designed before. It might have been designed before, but the cuts are so different because if you want to be somebody in life, you've got to be unique. You have to. I, uh, I mean, I agree totally. Uniqueness, you can't buy, man. Seriously, <laughs> uniqueness is, yeah, I agree. The thing is this, you lose your passion when you think about money. When you think about money and you say, oh, I want to do this because I want to get rich. You can That's take all right. money away from me. As you can see with my TikToks and everything, money is essential to live. That's right. But not to thrive. Not to thrive. I agree. And I am always happy. I'm always smiling. I wake up smiling. I go to bed smiling. I don't care about anything. And now my full attention is on waking people up to, because I kept quiet for a long period of time. And I'm going to tell you why I kept quiet for a long period of time. Yeah, because I was going to ask you when that time came in, when you thought, you know, because at the end of the day, you're putting a lot on the line too by speaking the truth as well. Mm, you don't know. You don't know nothing. I haven't told anyone because the thing is, is I don't want people to get scared because I don't want people to be scared for me because mm. I do call myself a beast. I do. I don't care what people say. I am a beast. I'm ruthless. I'm dangerous. Oh, I, am. I, I see. I see on your TikTok. That's why I approach you. I go. Oh my gosh! 
He's a fashion designer. He speaks the truth. He says it as it is. And that's helping humanity wake up. Like, I mean, you're on a mission and purpose as well. And I know, and I want to get behind why you're doing this. So please, Gianni, tell us. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what I do. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, but I want, if you got any audience, if you got young people listening, I don't care if you're a man or a woman, you need to pay attention to what I'm about to tell you guys, all right? This is important, all right? When I was young, I was abused as a child twice. In my family, the way our family system works, nobody ever got divorced. Nobody has ever been divorced. No man leaves his woman. No man leaves his kids. None in my history of my family from the early stages of the first, you know, when you have your family tree from the first day of my family tree till today, nobody ever got divorced apart from me and my brother. We are the only two members in our family who got divorced. Uh, I'm not going to say anything disrespectful about the women because the women were, they were amazing. There might have been some fault somewhere which happens, but I say God bless them all. So let me get back to what I'm saying. Okay, this is how it works. I was abused as a child. And the thing was, until I was 13, 14, like I told you, I couldn't speak because nobody leaves their kids in our family. Uh, but my mom, because she wasn't, she was a foreign. She's a foreigner. She did not speak the language properly. She was in a different place. She got, she had too much. Uh, amazing mother. My mom, my mom is the person who made me who I am today because she believed in me and I stuttered. Would you believe me if I tell you that I stutter? I still stutter. Uh, only my wife. I can believe stutter. it. I can only, believe it. Only my wife knows that I stutter and she laughs at me. She goes, you talk to the world like you're, you're a king. And then when you're home, you stutter in front of me. I say, see, your beauty makes me stutter, darling. But it's nothing else. I say, if you weren't so good looking, I would never stutter. But that's just me charming. But <laughs> think of this, right? She gets me gobsmacked, man. She's stuttering. She does hurt me sometimes, but she's blessed. Okay, so I couldn't speak. I stuttered. I used to sleep with the pillow. I still yeah. sleep with the pillow. I sleep with the pillow between, I hold the pillow and I sleep like this. And I'm 46 and I sleep with the pillow. So can you imagine me as a man? So I'm going to go back to telling you who I am as a man. I am probably, you can probably meet UFC fighters. You can meet MMA fighters. You can meet boxers. You can meet everyone. And I'm telling you when I tell you this, and I'm not joking with you, I'm more ruthless than them. I'm more dangerous than them, right? And I'll tell you why I'm saying that, all right? To be a man, you don't need to know how to fight. It's just, you've, not, you've got to understand there is no word giving up as a man. When you're a man, your sacrifice level has to be beyond anything anyone has ever seen. If you throw me in a pit, all right, full of snakes and everything, I will find a way of getting back out. That's why I say I'm ruthless. I'll bite the snakes. That's why I'm ruthless. Okay, I'm dangerous because if you're going to step on my toes, if you're going to step in front of my family, there is nothing on this earth, no government, nothing. Either my death is the only thing which is going to stop me. Otherwise, there's no way on this earth you're surviving. You could be six foot six and I will lift you up. This is what I would do because it's all in my mindset. All right. So when I say I'm ruthless, I'm ruthless for the people I love. When I say I'm vicious, I'm vicious towards my goals. You know, mm. these are the things a man needs to be. And when I say I'm okay. dangerous, when I say I'm dangerous, I'm dangerous because if you do bad by me, all right, you should know that bad things will happen to you. So that's why I'm dangerous. I'm not scared of this matrix system. I don't even call it matrix because a lot of people started to call it matrix, which I'm going to correct mm. it. It's not matrix. Matrix is run by numbers and digits and everything. This is systematically run governmental, first of all. Second of all, it's an establishment. It's the word I use establishment is because it has been established what they're going to do. And it's the exactly. establishment behind it. Matrix is run by computer. We're not there yet. So when people say it's a matrix system, I look at them and I laugh. I say, look, you guys are intelligent enough. You guys are intelligent enough to understand it is not a matrix system. It is a man-made run system. It's men who are doing this to us. All right. Exactly. They're doing it. They started doing it in the 1930s. When they got the women to go out of the houses after the second first world war, they got the women 
No, you're a you're a woman, all right? I'm gonna ask you questions, right? Okay. Let's check this out. Okay. If you got a man who says, "Hun, my darling, my sweetheart, I'm the one who's gonna go and sacrifice everything that I have. I'm gonna go and work on an oil rig for six months. I'm gonna risk my life to provide you those good nails, those good hair. I'm gonna do everything because you're my darling, because you are everything that I've ever dreamed about. How can I let you work? How can I let you go out in the world where you talk about this world being a horrible place where men are horrible? How can I let you go out there? I'll go out there. I will do this for you. You stay home in the comfort of your home. Look after the kids. Be with the kids. Go shopping. Take them out to the parks. Do something. I will sacrifice. I will work on an oil rig. I will work on a, on, on, on a, on a railway line. I will work in a coal mine. When I come out, I can't even breathe because I worked in a coal mine, by the way. I own coal mines. So I worked in a, I've actually owned a coal mine in Pakistan. I owned a coal mine because I wanted to know what it was like. So I owned a coal mine and I went in there and I tell you what, it is not a job. There was not even one single woman working there on an oil rig, not even one single woman working there. All right. I've seen men die in front of me. I have seen men die and they're holding their and they're holding in their hand before they die they're holding the picture of their i can't talk because i get emotional and i hate doing this i hate it with passion when i wow. disrespect men and they don't have a clue what men do i saw men die in front of me and they're holding the picture of their wife and their kids and oh their hand out of the rubble that's what men do. And I'm sick and tired of women saying, oh, men are trash. Try doing what we do. Go and do what we do. Huh? That's what I want to know. All this, all this nonsense, which I call it nonsense, about LGBTQ, AI plus infants, I call it nonsense. Do you know why? If you want to be a transgender, please be a transgender. But do it in the right way. And I can guarantee you there are millions of transgenders who are against all this rubbish they're getting in kids involved, man. So if you want to be gay, be gay. Yeah. I can't, you know, you're not affecting me. I couldn't, if I see a gay person getting hurt, I'll help you. But if you ask me that if it's the right thing to do, it's the right thing to do for you, but it's not the right thing for the whole community. Certain things are not right for the community, and I'll tell you why it's not right for the community. Because imagine if everyone was gay, there will be no birth. This exactly. will die. Imagine if it was all the lesbians. This world will freaking die. Imagine if everyone was LGBTQ, AI, freaking plus infants. The whole world will die. So true. There's no reproduction. Yeah. Oh but, my God. but that doesn't give us the right not to respect people. That's true. No, I agree. Everyone, yeah. Humans, you got to respect, but they're taking advantage, not the proper ones, but there's so many LGBTQ people are taking advantage. They, I'm going to give you a story, right? And I guarantee you, I want all the LGBTQ people to stand in front of me and talk to me, and I will give you everything. I said, look, you look, if you're trapped in a man's body, or if you're trapped in a woman's body, give yourself some time to understand you first. Because they're kids who are 13, they don't know. You're telling me that a 13-year-old kid can make his own mind up? He Not knows what he grows up? No, he, he doesn't even know if he wants to be a freaking doctor or if, he wants, or if he wants to be an engineer. How can you force these kids to do something? Violate their body. Chop off their things, which they're never going to have it again. Imagine there's a woman, right? She's having a mental crisis, right? She's a beautiful looking woman, a girl. I'm speaking to all the women out there. Please pay attention. Look, you can hate me today, all right? I don't mind being hated. If I can save your life for me to be hated and I can save your life, I say, God, help me save your life. I'm, I'm a humanitarian. All right. Yes. I'm not here to hate people. I'm here to bring people together. So listen to me, women. If you are 15 and you think you're going through this crisis of, oh, I think I'm a boy. Look, darling, you could be a boy, but give yourself some time. Go and speak to the right people, but they can't because the, I'm a psych, psychologist. I'm making them feel crazy. All right. 
give yourself a little bit of time. Try to understand yourself. Have a look where you, where the things are going wrong. Try to figure, you're clever. You're really, really intelligent people. You youngsters are freaking more intelligent than us because you are our future. Mm. So, and that's why I get upset. That's why I get upset that they are saying that we don't need men. I'm going to give you a story, okay? I'm going to give you a story. I was working as a designer. I was working in, in a place in a, in a factory where they asked me to do a lot of designing about glass factory. Me being me, a little bit of a thrill seeker. I went 200 feet up on the girders, jumping from one girder to the, I'm not scared of dying. I don't think I've ever have been scared of dying. Apart from if a lion attacks me, I might punch it and die, but I will still punch it. But what I'm saying is this, right? Oh, I'm going to give my best, right? Even though I break my hand, but I'll give my best. So the way I look at it is this, right? I was standing on a girder 200 feet up, and there's a gap of five, um, three feet gap from one girder to other. I didn't have a harness. Now check this out. This is what men do. I would love to see women do this as well. There was a guy on the floor. He got electrocuted, and I could see him. I ran from a girder to the girder to the girder. If one wrong foot and I would have been 200 feet down and I would have died. Did I care about myself? No, I did it because men don't give a crap about themselves. They fight. They don't have fear. That's why they're freaking men. You, yeah. take away men men's masculinity. you take away men's masculinity, what is left? And this is what's happening in the world today. That's Who's what they're trying to do. Yeah. Who's going to fight? Who's going to fight? You take away men's masculinity. Who's going to protect you women? Yeah. I, want an I want an answer. You take away men's masculinity. Who's going to be in a police force? Do you know weak men who can't control their emotions? That's what they do. That's what they did to Tyre Nichols. You heard about that story about Tyre Nichols? No. Five no. police officers of Memphis, they killed this 29-year-old um, FedEx driver. You telling me masculine men? Oh, no. that, that oh, yeah, that's right. The FedEx, yes, yes, yeah. that's what um yeah drew me to you as well. I saw that. You yes. Saw my, the, let me tell you one more thing. That oh, FedEx oh, driver. Oh. I I published the story about seven eight days ago when people didn't have a clue. I've got an informant. All right. I yeah. call my little bird. I call it. I call this thing. My little bird gives me a lot of info told me already that he died because of hate. He died because of revenge. He died because a man could not control because he was a weak man, the police officer, because that uh, Nichols war dating his either girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, whatever, baby mama, whatever, and they killed him for that. Is that. This is the difference. But if you have a masculine man who's like, you did this, you can have it. I ain't. I've got loads of others. I can get so many others. You can have this. A weak man who's weak-minded, who's not strong. Those are the men who weak men rape, weak men kill, weak men do all this. This is the problem when you are creating weak men. Weak men are the ones who can't control the emotions. And then they say, oh, a man has to control his emotions. Of course man control their emotion. We don't cry. You stab us when we cry. You stab a woman and she will run around the whole freaking city crying. We don't cry. We don't cry because we don't have to, time to cry. We're like, okay, that's a knife. Uh, all right, throw the knife. Let's go and get a sword out. This was the men. If you have men like this, they go into the war. Do you think the war, the Second World War, it was an easy job? Do you think... These LGBTQ people, the ones who think taking away the men's masculinity, I'm not saying anything wrong against them, but try to understand what I'm saying. Look, this is not hate. This is understanding no, of... Are no, you going behind the um, the knowledge and everything about it? You're making them see the bigger picture, what's actually happening. That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to beg the system to understand. LGBTQ women when they turn into men they can never be men men which turn into women they can never be women there's always going to be you can't turn around the dna you can't turn around your chromosomes you can't what you're doing is you're messing it up you think that the man who just converted into a woman will go and fight he doesn't have the test 
He doesn't have testosterone. Test testosterone. I can't say the word properly, but you know what? They don't, <laughs> I can't say. I, I always mix up. But the thing is this: when I was saying that I saw that man on the floor. By the way, the way I talk is I go this way, then I go this way, then I go this way. This like, way. I understand. <laughs> we understand. It's all good. <laughs> Because what I do is I give you a little information from there, a little information from there, but I'll bring you back to the story. So remember one thing, my conversation might go for a minute somewhere else. It's like, it's like you can probably call me, like lyrically, you won't understand me until I finish talking, all right? Then you will go, shit, now it makes sense. All right, sorry about the words. Um, <laughs> so this guy, so this guy, and I ran from Gerdes to Gerdes to Gerdes. I switched off the electric, came down, he was black. He had four kids. Tell me, isn't that what men do? Isn't that what men do? I've seen men give their lives up. What do you think they're thinking? Oh, I'm going to go and work and buy myself a Ferrari? Oh, come on, people. Come on. They do this for you, women. We do everything that we do is for you. Everything that we do is for you. I don't give a flying crap what car I got, man. If my wife is driving a nice Jaguar, because she does drive a Jaguar, that's what I'm saying. If she drives a nice XJ Jaguar, looks good, everything, she looks good. I'm looking at a smile on her face that makes me happy. And would you believe me that I drive a very, very simple car? All my family's got amazing cars. Amazing. You name the names, my family bought them, apart from me. And the reason is this. Car doesn't make me. So whatever I make, I give it to charity. Whatever I make, I feed my kids. I don't even buy it. This jacket you see I'm wearing, it's my brand. This top you see me wearing, it's my brand. This, my brand. Everything that I wear is my brand. I don't, we will, I have to go to a wedding. I'm going to give you a little story, right? I have to go to a wedding. Like, it's a massive thing about this wedding we got to go. And they are like, oh, yeah, GS is coming to this wedding. GS, GS, GS. Because I'm a designer and people love what I do. My wife took me three times to go and buy a suit because none of my suit fit me because I've gone bigger. I've gone a little bit more muscular. Yeah. Time's coming. Times are coming when a man needs to be big. So <laughs> it's, true, it's true story. I need to put on some it's big moves. It's the you, Gianni. <laughs> what? It's the beast in you. Well, it is. It's always going to be the beast in me. So I went... We tried three suits. Even the guy, he knew who I was. And he was like, why are you shopping here? I said, what do you mean? Went, you got your own brands. You know you can make your own suits. I've seen you. I was like, yeah, shut up. Don't say anything. Shh. Don't tell anyone I'm, it's me. He was like, I'll help you with everything. So he was helping me. And you know where my brain was? I was looking at my wife and thinking, if I get at this dress, how pretty will she look? If I get her shoes, how pretty will she look? If I get this for my daughter, how nice she's going to look. If I get it for my son with his, he's got an amazing long ponytail and he looks like a, my son is a walking, talking Hercules. My son is only six and he looks like Hercules. He is that handsome. And this is what I am. So the guy was looking at me going, what's wrong? I said, Do you know what? Forget about my suits. I'll just wear the jeans. I'll just wear the jeans and a t-shirt. He went, you're going to wear the jeans and a t-shirt to a thing? Yeah, I might put on a leather jacket. He's like, you're going to a wedding, which is supposed to be all the elites are going to be there. I was like, yeah. And we men care about our family more. This is what I'm trying to tell you girls. It's for you girls. Find yourself a good man. But if you want a good man to be a good man, you need to respect him. You need to give him his masculinity. If he says something, the reason he's saying it is because that's what he thinks. Don't go against him. Listen to him. Okay, fine. If that's what you want, that's what we're going to do. He might do that, but 10 times he'll do what you want him to do. It's a game. It's a trick. You've got to play with men. You go, it's like, have you ever flown a kite? Do you know what uh, I mean? I used to go when I was a kid, yeah. <laughs> of course you have. You're from Australia. Come on. 
when I was a kid, years ago, when I was a kid, <laughs> I haven't done one ever since. The most no, simple thing. That wasn't that long ago, so it's okay. Let's, let, me, let, me, let me explain something to you. <laughs> You're funny. Oh. <laughs> it wasn't that long. It was quite a long time ago. But anyway, go on. <laughs> How do you get the kite to fly high? How to get uh, the wind and running? No. No. No, that, no that's to get the kite going. Oh, okay. Kite to go f high and longer and longer and longer. I guess to show how long. Uh, the string. Yeah, I'll explain. You pull the string a little bit and then you let, let it go for 10 times longer. Then you pull in a little bit and then you let it go 10 <laughs> times longer. And yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that's the relationship between a man and a woman. You let the man do 10 things his way. And then you ask him to do one thing. He will do it with honor. And that's how it is. This is how you control a man. You can't control a man by saying, if you want a real man, you're going to make him run away. A real man will walk away from a relationship when he feels trapped. When he feels less masculine, he will walk away from that relationship. Do you know why most of the men, I've done my studies, a lot of my studies I've done on this, all right? Do you know, they say that why do men walk away from a marriage, walk away from their kids? 90% of the men don't walk away from their kids. They walk away from the woman. They don't walk away from the kids. They're sick and tired because you don't even show him respect in front of his kids. You, if a, if a father says something to the kid, the mother will come up. How dare you say that to me? It's my child. It's my child. All right? I'm going to give you statistics, right? Single mother home. All right? Listen to this. Single mother home. Kids, more likely to be in prison. Single mother home. Kids, more likely to rape. Single mother home, more likely to be fat and obese. Single mother home, more likely to cause more damage in the world. Why? Not because the mothers are not good mothers. It's mothers are mothers, fathers are fathers. All right? Same statistics, statistics go with single fathers. 5%. 5% jail. 3% rape. Why? Because a father and a son knows we're going to go out, we're going to pull women, we're going to pull women like men. Not that I would, I would never do that. We are going to, when a father and a son goes out, they're having a drink. I don't drink alcohol. I don't touch alcohol. I'm giving you an example. This is what they're going to do. They're going to sit back. Oh, she's hot. Yeah, she's hot. Yeah, but you can't have. Of course I can get. It's a competition. It's a respectful competition. So the father is actually, without knowing, is teaching his son how to compete against other men, not to snatch, to compete. Same thing goes, that's why they're not in prison, because they compete. They don't snatch. They don't murder. They compete with men. They fight with men. They don't murder them. That's what fathers teach without even realizing. It's, it's a psychological effect of a woman because a woman can't teach them that, but a woman can mm. teach a man to be compassionate. That's mm. what a woman can teach. A woman should teach a man how to respect a woman, but mm. they don't because why? They're vindictive towards men. We are ruining our future, and I'm sorry that I keep on being harsh on women. That is not my thing. I'm trying to teach women that look, you guys are by far the most beautiful creatures God has ever made. If you think like giraffes are beautiful, they are nothing. Anything you can think of. Ocean, nothing. I have never seen more prettier thing than a woman on this earth. You don't see it like we do. Women don't see, women don't see from, my, from, from our men's eyes. When we get gobsmacked. I use the word with my wife, googly eyes. <laughs> That's my word. When I say to my wife, I say to her, and I say to women, men get googly eyes. Men, yeah. men will do anything you want when they love you. They would, they would do anything because I know it's a wrong word. Men like possession. They like to possess things. Big cars. 
big homes, big this, big, big, because they're competing with other men because that's what men do. When a man stops competing, then he becomes jealous. When a man stops competing, then he wants everything for free. Guess what? Rape comes into it. If I am six or five, looks, all right, and I want to get a nine, a woman who's nine, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to up my status. Ooh. I'm going to work two jobs. I'm going to make enough money. I'm going to wear nice clothes. I'm going to have a nice watch. I'm going to walk in a dignified way. And when I speak, you know that you have been spoken to. That's what men do. And that's what I'm saying. Men are lacking that. Women mm -hmm. are lacking things. Men are lacking certain things. But I want unity. I want unity yeah. between men and women. If we don't have unity, this is what is going to happen, what is happening. Child trafficking. Because the kids, yeah. are, tra child trafficking comes in. And I'm going to get on a child trafficking because this is an important topic. And that's what I was going to talk about next because you talk about that as well. Like um, you've very loudly spoken and heard about that, which is amazing too. I'm so happy to see people um, seeing the truth and speaking about the truth too, and sharing the truth because this is what we have to do now. This is the only thing that's going to bring us all together and unite us together if we hear each other. You, there's because uh, this conversation is going to go on a platforms where I can't really tell you much, mm. but let me tell you one thing. Child trafficking is not a joke. Child abduction is not a joke. All right? All of this is not a joke. Right, right, I'm going to say certain things. It is happening, and it's happening for the wrong reasons. All right? Yeah. There are a lot of things which are happening. And tell, I'll tell you one thing. These kids who get kidnapped and they get trafficked, they only have two years and maximum four years to live. Have some compassion. Have some sympathy. Stop. Uh, what do you think happens to the kids when you two fight and you become vindictive towards each other and your kids are taken away from you? What do you think happens to the kids? Have some, have some respect for your kids, man. Have some respect. And I'll tell you a story which broke my heart, and I swear on my life, and I'm not joking with you. I'd probably end up going to prison for this, right? But I would do this, and probably would. There was a story. A father called me up, and he begged me to help him. But every time I tried to do the post, they took my post down. I'm not surprised. His story was, me and my wife got divorced. My wife has taken my son, and my son, which we had after four years of marriage, we tried and we had it after four years of marriage, and she has taken my son, who has got about four or five, and she's turning him into a woman. And he said, I'm trying to fight the authority that I'm a father. I should have a say, but the authorities would not let him have a say. Can you imagine what is this? A woman is going to turn his, her son so she can get some more likes on the social media. Mm -hmm. She can fit in with the LGBTQ stuff so she can be a part of this new culture, the woke culture. I feel sorry for this. I feel sorry for the father. He's fighting every day. He's crying. And there's so much I can do. I can't do much more than that. Do you understand? I have tried. I've tried everything. I've tried to reason with the woman. I've tried to say, look, the, the kid is a young kid. Don't do this. Let him grow up. How do you know? I said, how do I know? Was he born a woman? No. But he doesn't know his sex. I said, why are you doing this? Just because... Just because you don't want to be with this guy, you think the other guy is going to be better? I said, he is the best guy for him. Maybe not for you. Maybe not for you, but for, for the child, he's the best father. And mm. I don't, this, I, and I do not, I do not agree with this rubbish. All right. No matter what anyone says, that another <laughs> man, yeah. another man can raise another man's baby. I don't agree with this. I do not agree with this. This is not right. A father should, if, you, if you're an idiot, then you don't deserve kids. But a father should be the father. And if you decided to bring another man into the house, all right, that man has to respect 
that this child belongs to someone else and I can't disrespect him. He needs to be friends with him. Can't play a father role. If the father is available, if the father is good, first of all, don't give up on your marriages. He given up on marriages. 80% of the marriages don't work because of women. Because women think, because women become emotional, they think, oh my God, this guy's like, look, men are horrible, man. Men have hundreds of flaws. Try to find the good things about them as well, please. Like, women have hundreds of flaws as well. We all have flaws. Yeah. This is why we need to work on it together. Exactly. I agree with that unity and hearing one another and being there for one another. Oh, my gosh. Even just to hear, listen to someone else. Um, also, I've got um, I interviewed a girl here in Australia who actually saves sex trafficking kids. What she does is she does fundraisers, and every ten thousand dollars she raises for fundraising, ten thousand of that saves ten children from being sex trafficked. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Right, I'm working with the. I'm going to say the names as well. So please, everyone, go and follow these guys. Right, they are amazing people. So listen to what I'm saying. There's a gentleman called King Bao, all right? He's a UFC fighter. Get him up, King Bao. Then there's another one called Jimmy Levy. He, Jimmy Levy is a singer. He's a rapper. He is good man. These are good man. They work with me. We work on it together. I'll tell you what are we doing. And mm -hmm. then I have these two other boys. They're podcasters. They're on They're on uh, Rumble. They, they got, their thing is called Truth Stream. And one is Scott, one is Joe. We are all working. They're all my team. My team is in our team, and we're working doing this. I'm telling you what I'm about to do. I've got two fashion brands. This is this is my Gianni Salvatore brand, which is quite big, and it's a little bit more expensive. So this is something different. But I'm starting another brand called TF. Hold on for a second. I'm about to show you guys. Stay there. Gianni? Yep. I can't see you, but you can show the audience because when I record it, my screen goes blank. But show the audience, please. Okay, this brand, this logo, it's TF, True Future, all right? I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it, yeah. Now, I'm about to tell you, what is this brand? I'm going to open up my books. I want as many people to get involved in this brand as you can. I'm going to open up my books every year. Every year, doesn't matter if I make $1 or if I make $1 million, I'm going to open my books, which are going to be 100% accurate with my accountants and everything, all right? And I've got to, I'm going to have um, a panel of people who will sit there and go, okay, fine. We're opening our books. If you make $1 million, $2 million, $5 million, $60, 4 freaking million, I don't care, a billion. We'll give 20% every year to helping kids. We will start our own foundations. I will get other business, businesses to get involved in this brand, and not in brand, but in my community, which is called True Future Community. So the True Future Community is a community where everyone can join. Like imagine if you have a child and your child is getting bullied, but the school is not doing anything about it. Then we, our group, the True Future Group, the True Future Group will stand up for you. It will speak oh. for you. If a true future oh, group has goosebumps. good on you. Check this oh. out. I'm working on it. I need more people to follow this thing. It's going to take about a month or so because I'm going away now. But listen, so the true future, true future is, is going to be a brand. The reason I'm bringing brand into it because brand makes money. All right. So that money I can help people with. All right. So true future branding and the true future community. If we have, imagine, imagine hypothetically. We have 1,000 people. Those 1,000 people will post for that one lady and, and her child who's getting bullied. Those 1,000 people might be able to reach 10 million people. 10 million people will raise awareness of one person. Have we not beaten the matrix? We have beaten the matrix. Well, so called matrix. This is what I'm trying to do. I need as many people as I can get as many people, and the books are going to be open, the accounts are going to be open. No penny, not even one penny, or how do you say in US, uh, in, in America, no dollar, whatever. I, anything, no cash is going to be distributed, or anything is going to happen. It's not going to go in anybody's pocket until the money goes out, the 20% goes out. After the 20% is gone out, that's when we say, fine, now we got this much left, let's work on the other projects. 
But this is what we're going to do. This is what the true future community is. It is going to become one of the biggest community. Now, that's just the people. Now, imagine if the businesses want to be a part of it as well. They say, fine, you're doing something good. I've got a business. I've got a hair salon. I want to be a true future community as well. Now, your hair salon is on true future community. So in true future community, we can be able to post for you as well that this is a new member. Just open that thing. Please go and help her because she gives charity to this thing. Then people will come. We, I want to. It's bringing unity. It's bringing unity. And for the same cause, we're all coming together. Oh my gosh, that is so powerful, Gianni. Guess that who's is done this before? Guess who's done this before? I'm not going to say no names. I'm not going to say no names, but everyone knows this system works for someone who are very rich. They control everything. You name oh, it. Okay, I know, I know. <laughs> we can't say nothing otherwise. They're going to pull down my video. <laughs> I, I do this. I want to do this with these people. And let me tell you something about these boys, right? Uh, King oh, Bob. I'm looking to them, definitely. I would actually would like to have them guests on my show. So I like to actually help you guys as much as and, I can. And you can send them this interview as well. This man is willing to sacrifice his career for kids. King Bao, what a gentleman. One of my really close friends. Jimmy Levy, another controversial singer, always sings, doesn't matter what happens, he's a rapper. Amazing, beautiful soul. All right? Then you've got these two boys, Scott and Joe. They work relentlessly in trying to bring the truth out. All right? Yeah, I'll I, definitely have them on my show and I'll definitely support you guys and promote you. So I have no problem with that, Gianni. You know, yeah. I've not, and, and get you some more contacts or anything you need, just let me know. I, what I want you to do um, is get as many people involved as you can. Get as many okay. people involved as you can, not just with me, with yourself as well. Go pick big names. Pick big names. Go and speak to them. Don't be scared. So what they're going to say? No. Oh, I'm not scared. I've done actors before. I can get people to help you now, actually, some actors. I'm not scared of anyone. <laughs> Gianni, oh. that's one thing you're going to learn about me. It doesn't matter who you are or what your status is. It doesn't bother me. I think we're all the same. So I'll approach anyone. I have no problem. Well, listen to this, right? If I'm a lion, you're definitely a lioness. So let's do it. <laughs> do it. But, because- oh, I agree. And I'll get you also in contact with uh, Sonia Kutami. She's the one that helps the sex trafficking here as well. Like she raises the money and then she helps overseas to save children as well. She's on a mission. I've also got another guy who helps the homeless here as well. And he does it out of his own pocket. I've got another another guy. His name is um, something Wanger. He builds homes. And I've spoken to him. Once we get this going big, if it gets big, he can build shelters. Oh, he can get things to build shelters for the homeless kids, and we beautiful we look after. And I'll be the oh, same. Excellent. You know what? Also, do Gianni. I've also got um, a few actors I've done as well that are high profile. I'll get them to help you as well, and uh, that will, are willing to help and give set, back. Set up an interview with me and them. Because I want to know their intake on all of this as well. The things I can't um, talk about here, but I'll tell you what I will do. You need to get a Rumble channel. You got to. Yeah, I know. I've got to, yeah, I've got to work on that. I don't know. I've, um, I have to actually delete my old Rumble that I had and put the show up there, or whatever. I'll fix it all up and I'll and we'll can contact on there and do more interviews directly, like a group interview if we can. But um. What I'll do is everyone that um, I know that can help this cause at the moment, I'll send the, uh, you links to contact them and then you can contact them directly and then we can all work together and make this happen. Yes, that's what I want. And listen, the reason I'm saying that I'm going to be the head of this community, the reason is, is because I'm one of those guys that nothing can stir me, nothing can change me, nothing can motivate me out of this, nothing can do it. You can throw a billion dollar at me, I would look at it and go... You're yeah. unstoppable. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm like that when I get on a mission. That's what I'm like too. It's like get out of my way. I'm doing it. It doesn't matter what anyone says. You know what, Gianni? You'll find that it's these times now that we're living in. This has to be done to bring us all together. I'm going to give you something else. I'm starting this with King Bao. Watch this. Hold on. I've got it here. 
Just give me one second. I'm nearly there. I'm just having a sip of my coffee. <laughs> No. I can't wait to see it afterwards, Gianni, when I can see both of us on the screen, what you're doing behind the scenes there. It's my stock just come in. All right. I want you to read what it says. I, ca I can't see. No, well, what does it say? I can't see anything. I can only see a screen. I'm talking to yes. a screen. So the viewers can see it. It says, yes. and it says, uncancelable. You sorry? It says uncancelable. Okay. So that means we are not cancelable. You can't cancel right. it. So these yeah. t-shirts, I'm working on it now. All right. The true future, true future means not the future you know. True future means it's a future where we are going to bring. The, it's tr a, the, tr the true future. The true it, future. Yeah, not the one designed by man. You know? Yes. Oh, and, my light just went out. Huh? <laughs> Still look good. So, uh, un and it says uncancelable. So we can't be cancelled. So King Bao is working on it. I'm going to work on it with him. We 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 are trying. We are trying. I need That's big names to help me. I need big names to help me because the thing I'm I'm doing is this. I don't like to approach people. All right. The reason I tell you why I don't like to approach people is because if I started approaching people, I have my own aura about me and. I have rubbed shoulders with the biggest names you can think of. I don't want to approach people. I want people to approach me because if I approach people, it's different than when people approach me, I am approachable. That's the difference. Oh, well, I noticed that because when I um, messaged you, you straight away acted on it, and I thought that was really nice. I, I, I can see that in you. Yeah, I, definitely. I, I, I reply thousand messages a day. See these fingers? I have no... And this one and this one. I have no fingerprints left. I have messaged so many people. It's crazy. It's crazy. The thing is, but I'm willing to even promote the brand. I have no problems, um, Gianni, helping you promote it too, and write down the reason behind this brand as well, so we can get as many people involved. Yeah, no, definitely count me in, Gianni. Anything you need, just contact me. I have, a, I have no issues there. This brand is going to go huge in Australia. This brand is going to be the true future is going to go huge in Australia. So what I'm saying is even because we're working on the same uh, thing, what I'm trying to do is because it doesn't matter if it's in Australia, it doesn't matter if it's anyway, whoever takes the brand on as well. I'm, I'm saying to people, take the brand on, get yourself yeah. like even spend 5,000 pounds, get the T-shirts. All right. Make money for yourself. But give me that 20%, which, which is going to be recorded and it goes to charity. I don't care about me. I, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Mm. If I've got, if I've got enough pasta in my plate, I'm okay. I'm good. I'll have my pasta, survive one day, I'll be okay. But the thing mm. is, is I've loaded. Uh, I don't know if you've seen something on uh, on my on my Instagram um, today. I posted it was child trafficking and money being exchanged. And they no, kept, I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet the flow and the funny thing was so many people turned around and said to me oh this is fake this is fake and i'm like it is not fake because what they did is they made you believe it's fake by telling you it's fake by making it look the rest of it is fake it's not fake all right my insult sources are telling me it's not fake all right so this is what i mean even when you give them the truth yeah you don't tell me about it I, I hear you. I know firsthand because the girl I interviewed, Tonya Kotama, she told me firsthand the money she goes and goes to rescue overseas. And she actually wants to go on a mission. She asked permission to go actually on a mission where when the kids do come out, when they rescue them, that she's there to give them that hug, to give them that effect. So I know it's true. I've, ha I've, I've had the experience and the truth told to me. So it is happening, yes. I'm not but like sure. you said, some people are going to deny it. They don't want to, it's like they don't want to see it. They see it, but they don't want to believe it. I'm going to say two things before we go. You've seen the evil people. All of you have seen the evil. And if the evil works in such a way, and if the evil is making things happen, which is right in front of you and you cannot see and you're blind to it, but if you are following the evil blindly, it's got to be, it has to be an, an opposite to an evil. 
which is God. So if he exists, God must exist 10 times better. The problem, what has happened is we've lost God. We have gone oh, evil. I, mean, I, I agree totally. And they don't want to talk about him because he's more powerful. But the thing with, with, with the, the problem with God is this. God has given you a choice. Now I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you how the evil in God works. Okay. I get this a lot. Oh, if your God existed, Africa wouldn't be what it is. People, oh, Africa, was like this. Africa was one of the most, most richest continents in the world. It was you who destroyed Africa. It was you who destroyed what you call it, um, Asia. You telling me that Asia had one of the most, the, the, the most amount of riches in the world. You came there. With your you you reigned for two hundred years. You killed one hundred and forty million people, but nobody speaks about those one hundred and forty million people. But yet, the three million Jews about the Holocaust, everyone talks about. Don't get me wrong; no human should be killed. No human doesn't matter if you're a Jew, Asian, whatever, Christian, Muslim, whoever. You should not be killed. But you cannot say it's okay for certain people if the Jews get turned in one way. All right. And Asians don't have life. They don't have blood. They don't feel. They don't have kids. What about where were all these people when in 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 uh, what you call a Myanmar? They were killing babies. They were picking babies and throwing them in a in in, in a fire. Where were everyone else? Where were where were all these tears? Where were all these crocodiles' tears then? I'm sorry. I'm an advocate for kid. When they when they are killing kids in Palestine, where are you people? Where is everyone? Exactly. But I'll tell you one thing, though. I respect Australia. I will salute Australia for one thing, because Australia just took their uh, thing back from um, Israel. They said they don't want to be a part of it like this. But let me tell you one thing. It's Irish people are the ones who are the most vocal ones. They speak against it. Do you know how many child kids are getting trafficked in Palestine? Five-year-old, six-year-old, they get kidnapped from the streets. They get put in a prison and never been seen before. But that's not a violation against human right, though, is it? But if you say one wrong word about a Jew, you get cancelled. You get you get called, or you're a you're a you're you're a, you're a hater. No, it's about equality. I'm all about equality. No, but um, you know what? I'm going to put you all over my social media, Gianni, so you can speak about all this truth and people can see the truth as well and follow you. Um, you're on TikTok, Rumble. Uh, where, where else can they find you? I'm on Instagram. Instagram, yep. Yep, and I've just started my YouTube channel as well. Oh, I'm going to start. Beautiful. Yeah, and I'm, gonna, I'm going away for a month. I've got a few businesses to look after. Yep. I'm going away yep. for a month. When I come back, I'm going to start my 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 po proper proper podcasting as well. I'm going to start my oh, podcast. Oh, I can't wait, Gianni. I'm sorry, I've got to cut it short right now. I've got to go. Um, I do apologize. Um, but we can sit here all day and talk. We've got so much to talk about and there's so much you can deliver. But I'm glad that we've given people platforms so they can follow you as well. Thank you very much. And I'm glad and I'm grateful that I've had you on my show today. I appreciate you so much, Gianni. And keep up the good work because you know what? It's time for us to stand up now and to come together as one for humanity's um, sake. And I have to say one thing to you. Um, yeah. I have to salute you as well because you are fighting a good fight and you're not worried about yourself and you're fighting it and you know that this is not, you're not going to be liked by many people, but yet you're doing um, it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> It's all good. <laughs> we got to do what we have to do, and that's it. That's all I can say. Yeah. So before I go, I want to leave one message for people, which I always do, and I always say to people, yeah, stop being selfish. Stop oh, thinking. I about love it. Think about <laughs> as a man, <laughs> as a man, all right, as a grown man. Stop being selfish. Think about your woman. Think about her needs. Think about what makes her happy. So what? Women do complain a bit, all right. But you are a man, and what you yeah. right. sorry. So I'm saying women okay. do complain. It's all right. Women do complain. But you, is it still recording? Sorry. Is it still recording? 
Yeah, it's still recording. I've just had a call come in. I've just got someone downstairs. I've got a lady in. That's why. <laughs> right, sorry, let me just finish it quickly. As a right. man, act like a man. As a man, get off your ass. If you need to work two jobs, work two jobs because you need to be a man, all right? You need to show the world. To be a good man, to be a successful man, you have to have status. I'm telling you, status is very important. Go to the gym, work hard, work two jobs, get yourself a nice car, get yourself a status where you can sit back and say, now I've got this, now I'm going to go and get the best woman who can have my babies and have, give me a family. And for women, respect men. More than love, we need respect. If you respect us, we are willing to die for you. We will literally die for you because when a man loves a woman, there is nothing more to him than loving a woman. All right? So respect each other, please. It's very important. If you argue, so what, man? Everybody argues. Who gives a crap about arguing? Argue, make it up. You can't give up. That's the thing. you got to make it work. And we can make it work. Got to make it work, man. Got to make it work. Okay, guys. Um, All right. Lovely heaps. Well, thank you so much, Diani. So we're signing up for now. Sister. On the talk show, Angel, on the Virgo show. Sure. Bye, right. Diani. And my friend, you look after yourself and we will speak you soon. Too. You too. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.